I'd like to start on time because there's lots to cover and we want to be able to get to your questions. So I will go ahead and kick us off. Again, welcome and thank you for joining this special TechSoup hosted online webinar about Microsoft program offerings. Today we're going to be talking about Microsoft products, solutions, and services that TechSoup can help you with your organization. We're going to go over some licensing options as well. Uh, my name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup, and I'm going to introduce our host in a moment. But I do want to let you know that this is being recorded. And in about 48 hours, those who's registered, you'll get the recording and the slides. So have no fear. You'll get all this, and you'll get a replay of this. And now I would like to introduce our speaker. Her name is Shruti Ramaswamy. She is the Director of Corporate Relations. She's been here at TechSoup for over five years, and she is responsible not just for Microsoft program offerings. She also works with nonprofits and Microsoft to ensure that the sector around the world is able to get the most impact from the program offerings. Prior to her work here at TechSoup, she was a technology consultant at IBM. And Shruti, I'm so excited to hear more about the Microsoft program offerings. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Aretha, and thank you everybody for joining today. Um, good morning and good afternoon, and thanks for spending this next hour with um, us. Uh, we hope that this session is going to be uh, helpful to you guys in terms of answering uh, questions that you might have on offerings that are available to the nonprofit sector and to libraries um, from Microsoft, and we are I'm here to provide you a quick overview of what's available, some of the products and solutions that are available, but really we want to hear from you. So throughout this uh, presentation, please feel to put any of your questions in the chat. We have a whole group of team members from TechSoup here to help answer your questions and to make sure this is the most useful um, time that you're going to spend. So with that, I will get started and just provide a quick overview about um, Microsoft offerings and TechSoup as well. So the first uh, thing I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware is, um, in case you're new to us, uh, TechSoup is a global nonprofit. Um, our mission is to be a bridge that connects the nonprofit sector with all of the resources that's necessary for us to achieve our missions and to really create the impact for a more equitable world. Um, today, what we're going to be covering is one aspect of what TechSoup does, which is connecting nonprofits to donated and discounted products and services. Um, that includes software and hardware and courses and manage IT services and consultations. So there's a lot we do. Uh, there's a lot that we want to help with. And so I'll talk a little bit about what those offerings are as well. Uh, we work with over a hundred or so organizations. So there is a lot of technology solutions that are out there. Today's focus is going to be a little bit on the Microsoft area, but uh, please know that the, micro, that the TechSoup offering has tons and tons of technology um, at your disposal. And I always say that if you are thinking about making any type of technology decision, check TechSoup first. We're here to really make sure that the process where you have to go to each individual vendor and figure out whether or not they have a nonprofit offer or not is streamlined um, so that you can come to one place, TechSoup, so that we can um, help you determine what is available for nonprofits and what might be available to you as a specific offer that you can take um, advantage of. Like I mentioned before, we have a lot of different offerings and we want to support organizations wherever you are in your technical um, you know, structure, infrastructure, your journey and digital transformation journey. So we have solutions um, and software for organizations that are just starting out in terms of building out their own technology stack. And we have um, all these services and solutions and courses that help us bridge that and really think about a fully cloud-oriented or fully cloud-based solution as well. And we're here to help you along that path if you want to be on that path or help you where you are. What we're going to talk a little bit 
today about is really the Microsoft solutions. And we have had a very long partnership with Microsoft for over 25 years to make sure that we're bringing the best productivity suites, operating systems, server solutions to the nonprofit sector. And Microsoft has a very generous program as well to support the sector and a really long standing commitment to the nonprofit sector around the world. And so what we wanted to do today was provide a little bit of understanding about what's available to you and um, how you can go about making some of the decisions you might need to for your IT um, investments. So the first thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is just level set on some of the key terms that we use in terms of Microsoft licensing and software. Um, there are two kind of core areas that we wanted to distinguish from each other. Um, one is the on-premises software solutions that are available. On-premises solutions are those solutions that you download, that you have on your desktop solutions, um, that you pay for at one time. And um, we're distinguishing that from the cloud solutions, which are more subscription-based and are uh, continually updated. So we'll talk a little bit about both areas of offers today, and I'll start a little bit with uh, the on-premises solutions. The first thing that um, we'll note here is that um, the, or the, the software offerings that are available for downloads um, are uh, both available as a donation and a discount. And some of the products like this are going to be um, Office standard, Windows desktop operating systems, and I can go through a couple more of that, but those are the products that you would actually, um, many of you probably have gone to the Microsoft Volume Licensing Center, actually downloaded it, have a key, and then you own that product and software moving forward. So the Microsoft donation program that we have at TechSoup allows us to have about 50 licenses for most project products. Um, that are allocated to nonprofits uh, within this program. There is a small administrative fee that is associated with those donations, and I can talk a little bit about that and what those are um, on the next slide. Um, but Microsoft makes available their standard level products, um, about 25 or so products available as a donation uh, to the sector. And if you need more than that, if you need um, more than the 50 licenses that are allocated, there are also discounted offers that are available. And these discounts usually run about 60 to 70% off of the normal retail price or the commercial retail price. And they're available for um, the licenses for not only the standard products, but also some of the higher level uh, professional um, products as well. So right now, Office Standard is available as a donation. Um, but Office Professional would be um, under the discounted program. The other thing I would note about the donation on-premises software program is that currently all of our donations come with software assurance. So if you've received a donation with us before or you're thinking about making a request for a donation now, those do come with software assurance, which provides you for up to two years free upgrade rights if there was a new version of that product that would be made available, and also downgrade rights if you need an older version of the product um, in order to be kind of uh, more uh, consistent with what the rest of your team may have. The next kind of group of products that I wanna talk a little bit about are the cloud products. And Microsoft makes available many cloud licenses for the nonprofit sector. And I will just state here that uh, Microsoft is a cloud first company. So most of the development, innovation, and priority that they are putting in terms of product development really go to a cloud first solution. So a lot of the new functionality, collaboration, security enhancements you'll see mostly reflected within their cloud offerings. Uh, the cloud offerings are subscription based, as I mentioned before. Um, some of these are available as donations and some of these also include some of the downloaded capabilities as well. But in general, um, these uh, licensing offers are available both as donation and discount and I will go through some of those licensing options shortly as well. 
One thing to think about as you're thinking about the decision between an on-premises or a cloud solution is some of the advantages and pros and cons of each one of these solutions. Uh, on-premises, the downloaded software can have some advantages if you're really looking for a one-time expense, if you have um, something that broke that you're just trying to fix. Um, there are no ongoing costs and there is some assurance because you do, it does come with software assurance if you need an upgraded version. Um, some of the disadvantages, as I talked about, is that a lot of the product-rich features that are really being built out by Microsoft are, are not as uh, prevalent in these, um, these uh, on-premises solutions. And if you want to update things or if you want, if you need like security releases, you're going to have to um, actually patch those yourselves. You have to monitor those and make sure that that's going to be kept up to date. Um, on the cloud side, all of those things happen automatically. Um, and some of the advantages that you have or at any time there's a new feature released or a new pro product release, that's automatically going to be updated into your cloud subscription. Um, you also have more flexibility because you can turn on and off licenses as you want to, and that can be very helpful, particularly if you have a large volunteer base um, or you have kind of cyclical natures in which you have more staffing needs than, and less. Um, and some of the other advantages is you don't have to have some of the larger infrastructure purchases that you may have in the past, like Outlook servers, Windows servers. A lot of these things can be managed fully within the cloud. Um, some disadvantages um, can include that there might be recurring costs that, you know, have to be budgeted for. And um, obviously, as we move to different technologies, there's always a little cost of change. So we understand that that's something that organizations need to think about and budget for and allocate in terms of time. But as I said, we're, we're really here as a partner to help support that process as well. So what I wanted to do was just highlight a few of the key products that have been our most popular products with the sector and make sure uh, we could answer any questions that you guys might have on that. I will just note that I'm just kind of going through really, really the top three or four products here. So there's a suite and lots and lots more that are in our catalog that you can look at. And if you have any questions on those, like I said, please um, feel free to include those in chat. So some of our key on-premises offers, so those are the downloaded software, include our Windows operating system. And these are actually upgrade licenses, so um, organizations who are running older versions of the Windows operating system, Windows Pro or Enterprise, allows you to upgrade to the latest version of um, the operating system. This uh, Windows 10, which is the current operating system, is uh, much more secure and it has a much higher level of productivity if any of you have noticed um, or if you've upgraded yourself, the um, time to boot up your computer has sped up considerably. And I know personally that's been a big thing for me. I think it takes me longer to boot up my Android phone now than it does my laptop. Um, and Windows 10 is also um, something that is very um, helpful and uh, sometimes necessary for some of the cloud solutions to be used as well. Um, that's available um, for up to 50 licenses through the donation program for um, an administrative fee of $20 per license. Um, the second is probably our most popular product, which is Office Standard. Uh, that's the latest version of Office that is currently available. Um, that comes with PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, and OneNote and Publisher. Um, that can be downloaded to your desktop and um, does have integration capabilities if you're using cloud storage use, uh, devices as well, such as Box, Dropbox, or uh, OneDrive as well. And uh, that's available, again, for the 50 quantity restriction <laughs> for um, $39 per license. And the last uh, license that I wanted to just uh, touch on is the Windows Server Standard. Uh, Windows Server is the operating system that is necessary for handling of network management, printing capabilities, domain control, web servers. Um, it's uh, often if you have kind of physical processors or hardware, you're going to need um, the server solution. Um, the server licensing can be a little complex and it is um, not incredibly intuitive. So if you have any questions on a particular need you have, I would definitely suggest you uh, send us an email or reach out to us so we can help. 
but on a very high level, these licenses come with two core licenses. Um, and basically each physical processor usually needs a minimum of eight core licenses. So um, figuring out how many licenses you might need or how many bundles and packs of licenses you might need based off of your setup is not always the easiest things, but there are some calculators out there and we're happy to help with that as well. Um, and the admin fee on that is about $11 with um, a max license of 25. So server licenses are the only kind of categorization of products um, that are a little different than our 50 quantity restriction throughout the other areas. The next um, group of products that I'm going to talk about are a little bit more um, cloud focused, but I just wanted to note again, there are many, many, many more products uh, that are available in the donation and discount program. So I would encourage you guys to look at the product catalog and I can see there are a lot of people that are already asking questions. So we really appreciate that. And that's the goal for today is to make sure that those questions are answered. Um, so I'll start talking a little bit about the cloud solutions. Um, there's a lot of information on this page and what I really wanted to highlight is, you know, what I had stated before, Microsoft and most companies right now are really cloud first and cloud focused. Um, cloud solutions do provide a lot of resiliency and opportunity for scale for organizations and um, you know, we know that a lot of organizations are going to have much more remote work and remote working staff moving forward. Uh, I think 80% of full-time workers actually expect um, that they are going to be working from home at least three times a week, um, even after the pandemic uh, subsides and we're able to meet people a little bit more freely. Um, but that being said, uh, cloud solutions, um, what we saw in some surveys that we ran are organizations who had already moved to cloud solutions were able to pivot quicker when the pandemic hit to move to digital work, to move to more remote work. And we wanted to make sure that um, all the organizations that we support um, are able to do that as well. And so I would just highlight here, cloud solutions can be really, really helpful for pivoting to remote work, for stronger collaboration, um, for more security, you're going to be able to leverage the security of the companies of the cloud solutions that you're working with. So you have, you know, the security experts at Microsoft or AWS or any of the um, cloud providers that you're using really behind you, which can be really, really powerful, especially for small organizations um, that might not have that IT power in house. Um, and there's also a lot of flexibility, which I think is really, really helpful for nonprofits. Um, but there are tons of licensing options and they don't make it super easy to understand all of that. That's where we try to come in and try to simplify that a bit. There are many options. And so as great as it is to have that flexibility and choice, um, there are some things that you should be thinking about and considering when figuring out what the right licensing solution is for you. So I will go to the top, I would say, three offers that are available right now from a cloud perspective from Microsoft um, that are the most um, you know, requested as of right now. Um, we have about three licenses that I'm gonna talk about under the Microsoft 365 umbrella. And I just wanted to spend a second on this because Microsoft 365 and Office 365 are often used synonymously, but um, earlier this year, Microsoft started to make a more deliberate change to move from the Office 365 language to the Microsoft 365 language. Um, really just as a signal, I think, um, of, you know, the offers that we have in the cloud solutions here are much more than Office applications that you might be used to. So Excel, Word, PowerPoint, they're all part of all of these solutions, but there's a lot more including Teams and Exchange and Publisher that are included in here. So the, the movement to the naming of Microsoft 365, um, I think is really more of a signal of that. So the first licensing group that's available is Microsoft 365 Business Basic. Um, these licenses come with Exchange, Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Um, and these are uh, free for up to 300 users. But the one thing I just want to state here is that these are cloud only applications. So this is really useful for organizations who have 
team members who are really used to using cloud-based solutions, who have active um, ability for internet connectivity, um, and who might be using kind of G Suite type technologies to date. Um, this provides all of those tools within the cloud, um, cloud licensing suite, uh, but it does not include downloadable software. The second category um, is Microsoft 365 Business Standard. Um, this includes cloud services and desktop, app, desktop applications, so you can download all of these and have them on your actual device, and you don't require an internet connection to be able to use and update that. Um, and that's available at $3 per license per month for up to 300 users. And I'm seeing, I'm trying to see a little bit of the questions as I'm going here, but one thing I would just point out, I know is a question that comes up a lot, is you can pick and choose whatever license you want. You could have one license for a couple of people, you could have 300 people in a different licensing group, and that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, you can figure out what works for you, what works for the roles that you have in your organization, and for how long. So if you have a group of volunteers that are coming up that you want them to have access to a couple of applications or making available in the cloud, you can get the 300 for three months. And then you can decommission it when they leave and you're only kind of using it as you need it. And um, it's a pay as you go kind of um, subscription model. Um, the last one, which I would really highlight and I should have put like a big yellow red box around it, um, is the Microsoft 365 Business Premium offer. This is a fantastic offer and it's available for the first 10 licenses for free. Um, after that, it's about $5 per license per month. Um, but you can see as it includes everything that we had just talked about, both the cloud and the desktop versions of basically all of the Office software, including Outlook, Publisher, and Access. Um, but it also includes a ton more security features, um, including device management, access controls, and there's so many more robust security features that are basically inherently provided in these licenses, um, which I always recommend, particularly because they're available as a donation for organizations to take advantage of those 10 free licenses. And then, as we mentioned, you can pick and choose the licenses that you add on top of it for the rest of your staff. You can pick and choose um, either the basic licenses that are available as a donation or some of the um, discounted licenses that are available. Again, there are many, many more licensing options. We do have a blog post that kind of helps spell those out, thinking about what considerations you might have. I'll state that some of the key considerations that we definitely recommend thinking about are how many people in your organization need it, um, need licenses, what do they need access to, what are their primary uses of technology, and um, what licenses make sure, you know, have those kind of key features available to them, whether or not they need cloud only or desktop solutions. And then also thinking about your own budget and, you know, how you want to allocate that budget and where you might want to see that budget allocated towards in um, with the licenses particularly. And then another key factor is the security that you need different organizations are kind of managing different data. So if you are an organization that is working with vulnerable populations or have health data or um, data on children or personal identifiable information, you might have a, yet a different need for security um, than some of the inherent features that are available. And so for those, there are licenses available that have a lot more security built into it. And we would definitely recommend exploring those options. Um, based off of what you, the data that you need and the licenses that you might need for your roles. Um, like I said, there are a lot of other options out there. Um, uh, there's licensing, but there's also lots of add-on licenses and a lot of different other products. We haven't really talked about Azure here, and that was a miss on my part, but um, Azure is also um, available as a platform as a service solution instead of some of the server-based solutions you might traditionally have. Um, directly from Microsoft, they have a $3,500 grant towards your Azure consumption. Um, but we also have a, a ton of add-ons available for audio conferencing, for Teams calls, uh, threat protection for advanced security features in your email and your document attachments, and just storage. What One of the add-ons that we see a lot is um, just need for additional storage for emails or for um, your um, OneDrive and things like that as well. 
Um, I also wanted to highlight here um, Power BI, um, which we've heard a lot of organizations starting to adopt. Uh, Power BI is Microsoft offer and solution for data analytics and visualization. TechSoup ourselves as a nonprofit has started adopting Power BI and we're kind of becoming a lot more dashboard heavy and um, it has helped us tremendously in terms of program management, um, particularly me to help manage programs in general. So. Um, Power BI licenses are available both as a donation and as a discount. And I definitely, there is kind of a freemium version of it. So if you haven't explored that at all, I would definitely suggest taking a look at that as well for some of your data analytics. Um, I just wanted to emphasize again, obviously we are not just about products. We spend a lot of time going through some of those product solutions, um, but we know that it's not as easy as necessarily just figuring out what license and signing up. So we try to offer support services and help throughout the way. So the first step is um, I would recommend, and if somebody wouldn't mind popping into the chat, the link toward it, um, if you have any questions or need support in figuring out what licensing should work for you, what licensing is the best for your organization's needs, uh, we do have a cloud consultation service that's completely free. We just offer help. Um, you can schedule time with us and we can um, help you select the licensing that might work best for your organization. Um, the second is the setup and implementation. So if you need help assigning users to set up your Office 365 account in the first place, we're happy to help there as well. Um, we also have a cloud starter kit um, that is a subscription service that helps you get all set up, um, trained up on the new kind of cloud solution, as well as providing ongoing support for any issues that you might have. Um, and then I'm not going to spend too much time on it yet, but we do have a full course offering under the Microsoft Digital Skills Center that would allow you, your team, your volunteers to access training and get more um, exposure to some of the tools that are available to you. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. We also have um, just services that can help you migrate to from wherever you are to these solutions. So that includes data migration, email migration, Windows upgrade support, and for those organizations who might not have in-house IT or if you need additional support, we also offer um, you know, outsource help desk or uh, managed IT services as well. Uh, what I wanted to kind of double click on a little is our Microsoft Digital Skills Center. About um, two years ago, we partnered with Microsoft to really develop course offerings specifically for nonprofits, uh, volunteers and staff members um, on how to leverage Microsoft solutions uh, to better serve your needs. And so all of the training that we have available and we have them basically for any kind of Microsoft product or suite that you would typically use in a nonprofit, um, we have course tracks, we have individual courses that are really meant and um, have exercises that are tailored to nonprofits that have kind of contextualization in terms of how you might use Excel to manage budgeting or Excel to manage project management um, to really make sure that you can plug and play within the courses as to what you're trying to solve, what you're trying to need help for, um, and allow you to build upon the skills that you may already have. And one thing I would definitely just echo here from what we have already talked about is that there are so many features um, in some of these products that a lot of it is just unknown and we're only scratching the surface on the capabilities some of the solutions have. So I would definitely recommend some of these courses just to get so much more out of the features and products that you probably already have available at your fingertips. And I'll just say here that many and kind of most of these courses are available completely for free right now. So um, definitely encourage your team or your staff or volunteers to look at the Microsoft Digital Skills Center and all of our TechSoup course offerings right now and see if there's anything that might be helpful to them as they're adopting new solutions or just learning to use the solutions they have as well. Um, and these courses are offered by TechSoup, but we worked in partnership with Microsoft to develop them to make sure that we were bringing in some of their subject matter expertise as we built these courses. And one last thing I just wanted to highlight before we just dive into some more questions is um, Microsoft and LinkedIn recently kind of merged uh, the last couple of years. And so I, I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity 
to uh, make you guys aware that LinkedIn also has some nonprofit specific offers. Uh, those are not, these aren't available directly through TechSoup, but I did want to make sure that you guys were aware of it. So a lot of the tools that LinkedIn has available for hiring, for marketing, which they um, have, you know, kind of created a way for us to use that for uh, marketing of nonprofit events, um, fundraising, as well as just the LinkedIn learning courses, which TechSoup also uses in some ways for our own staff development, um, are available to nonprofits at a discount. Uh, those discounts aren't as um, well known and they're not published on their site, but it can go up to about 50%. And so I would definitely make sure that you check those external links out, especially if you're paying for any LinkedIn subscriptions or memberships right now in your staff um, to think about looking at the nonprofit specific offers that they have because um, they are doing a lot more in this space. So I will pause here. I feel like I just talked forever and, um, and I will, you know, just wanted to make sure that we have chances to answer your questions. And I know that everybody has been kind of posting and we have a lot of activity in the chat, which I'm grateful to see and hear, but if there's anything that um, Aretha that you can make me aware of that people are asking a lot of, I'm happy to answer. Yes, well, thank you so much. That was amazing. I learned a lot. And I just wanted to make mention, um, Maureen, I mentioned about closed caption. This is being recorded. It will go on YouTube. And when we put it on YouTube, we'll make sure that the closed caption um, is available so that you'll be able to follow along. So there were a lot of questions in the chat room. Most of them are being answered. Um, I One question that keeps coming up, people are not sure about the clouds. When you mention the cloud, it sounds foreign to a lot of people. So the question that comes up a lot is the difference between Office 365 and Microsoft 365. Sure. So yeah, let me spend a little bit of time trying to unpack that. So. Uh, the cloud solutions that Microsoft off offers are basically products that are available as a subscription and they are a um, opportunity for you to leverage a solution that Microsoft kind of owns and manages. And so you don't necessarily download a specific software and own it yourself. Um, the cloud solutions are really kind of a subscription to the capabilities that you're signing up for. And they are ongoing subscriptions and the licensing kind of varies based off of what you want access to. Um, so it's not something that you would just have on a traditional desktop or download and have one license key for. Um, the difference between Microsoft 365 and Office 365 is super confusing and um, not really um, super intuitive, but uh, really Microsoft 365 is just the naming convention that uh, Microsoft is using to talk about Office um, applications that are available through the cloud solutions that incorporate a lot more than just Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. It usually includes Teams, it has SharePoint, OneDrive, OneNote, a lot of other things that are in there. So it's not just your traditional Office applications. Um, Microsoft still does use the name Office 365 sometimes, so it's not completely um, transitioned fully to the names yet. Um, but the distinction of the name is not as um, important as kind of figuring out what capabilities are within the licenses and um, they don't do us any favors by naming everything the same thing, I don't think. <laughs> awesome, here's a question from Sarah. She said, would you mention what versions of Microsoft support sending and receiving encrypted emails? Yeah, so the encryption in emails is available through different um, licensing uh, options. I know that they are available in the business premium and E3 license op options of Microsoft 365 and Office 365. And I'm sure somebody in our team can answer specifics in the chat as well if you have follow up. <laughs> awesome. So there's been several questions I, I've noticed in the chat room. A lot of people have bought Office 365 either from GoDaddy when they set up their website mm -hmm. or they bought it directly from Microsoft. So they're wondering now, okay, how can I get TechSoup's discount? How can I merge over, switch over? What are they doing? Sure. Do? Yeah, and that's really um, a little bit confusing as well. So I definitely want to explain that. So um, Microsoft donations 
are you know exclusively available through TechSoup in terms of the on-premises solution. So a lot of times organizations are used to coming here and getting that. Office 365 has been on the market for a really long time. And so it's um, you can get that directly from Microsoft. You can get that directly from other resellers. Um, and most of the time, hopefully, um, you are getting those at nonprofit discounts. Many of the other resellers are able to provide that at a discount to you as well. But with TechSoup, um, we are able to provide that to you at the same discount um, that Microsoft is able to provide it to you. And it comes with a few more things. When you get it through TechSoup, um, we are also providing support. Um, we are also providing the help that you need to be able to access it. And any fees that we collect on any of the licenses goes back to the nonprofit sector through TechSoup. And so we use that to create the content, create um, the courses that are available for you, um, to create the blogs, the materials, to put on events like this, <laughs> um, and to really just help and make sure that we're providing support to the sector throughout it. So. Um, in terms of the support that you'll get right now, if you have GoDaddy or you're directly going to Microsoft, um, you probably can um, raise tickets and you can get things resolved if you want to add licenses. With TechSoup, you'd be, do, be able to do the same, except TechSoup would help manage that for you. We'd be able to support you in adding or deleting licenses. We'd be able to support you in figuring out how we can get resolution on tickets that you have. We are actually a gold certified partner of Microsoft, so we do have access to a lot of the Microsoft support teams as well to make sure that we get your answers escalated quickly and resolved as quickly as possible as well. So really there's a lot of options for you to get cloud services, um, but we're happy and we would love to partner with you to do so to make sure that we're being um, able to help you throughout the, the problems that you might have. And, and the other, you know, great thing about TechSoup is there's a lot of other solutions that we offer. We know that sometimes it's not always the case that Microsoft's going to solve all of your technology needs. And so we're here to help you throughout the rest of your technology needs as well. Good. So Kay, uh, if you already have Microsoft products, how do you transition to the TechSoup version? That's kind of a yeah. answer, but you may want to elaborate on that again. Sure, and if you do have them, you can transfer uh, uh, to us. I would recommend um, there is, if we can put in the link, um, the Cloud Manager or kind of the Microsoft 365 or Office 365 product page from our team, um, you can go through that process. And what we can do is we can move your licenses to us as your reseller, um, and then we can um, help manage that moving forward. So Lori, um, who do I contact for supporting setting up Office 2019 email? Um, we do have um, a couple of support and help options. So we have a help desk service for like one-time things that might be um, what you need, Lori. Uh, we also have managed IT services. So um, I will try to find a um, link in here for our um, uh, solutions and services and you can send us a request and we can try to help you with that. Okay, continue to type your questions in the chat room. I saw a few questions about the help desk and the service desk, two different things. We have a live chat room for the help and the, the help desk, excuse me, is separate. It's actually a separate service product. So I had a gentleman, um, he was actually a pastor, who said that um, he used TechSoup help service to help him, you know, loading things on products on his computer. So. Make sure if you need actual help, you can uh, contact Help Desk to actually help you. All right, so great. Um, she put the Help Desk link in the in the chat room. Thank you so much, Gary. Gary, well, our team. I would love to thank our team. They've been in the chat room answering. <laughs> Gary and Phil. We have Janet. So thank you so much. Um, Brenda said um, she momentarily got kicked out, so she didn't hear how to contact. I'll walk you through how to switch from Office 365 directly to Microsoft to TechSoup's version. At the same time, be sure it doesn't mess up your GoDaddy email. So, so what I would suggest, um, Brenda, is just to make sure because we definitely don't want to mess up anything that you ex uh, you currently have with um, GoDaddy. So. Um, maybe we can send you a link to our consultation and we can set up some time to specifically go through it with you because um, there are offers that maybe GoDaddy has that we want to make sure that we're getting you the best price and best thing. So, um, and we can kind of walk you through the steps if it makes sense to move to TechSoup on those. So um, we'll send you a link for the consultation and maybe we can chat with you specifically.
quickly on that. Awesome, awesome. Tracy said for the licenses, are those emailed to our to our main organization email or can they be emailed to our volunteer emails? So that is based off of the TechSoup profile. So when you have downloadable licenses and when you're signing up on your uh, TechSoup organization email, all of the licensing and product information is going to be sent to that specific email that's on file. So if you want to change that, you can update your org profile on TechSoup.org or call our um, support desk and I'm sure that we can help you with that um, but that would be the way to change where those products are actually going to one uh, Rita says how do you become qualified as an MSP to offer TechSoup licenses how did TechSoup get qualified it is how you so I'm not sure if it's TechSoup can you type okay. in that TechSoup or or you want to be qualified to offer TechSoup licenses um, so we've been working with Microsoft for, like I said, about 25 years right now. And so uh, we have all, we have, I think since that 25 year period have always been um, working with Microsoft as a distributor of their software donation program. And as Microsoft has evolved all the different platforms in which they're actually providing um, solutions to nonprofits and to the world, uh, we've partnered with them to make sure that we're building up our own capacity and our own kind of infrastructure in place to be able to be um, a gold certified partner to support nonprofits as well. And our goal here is to make sure that all nonprofits have access to the same technology. And we know that a lot of times commercial partners can really be um, quite pricey and we want to make sure that that's not a, a you know, a deterring for people to kind of move towards technology. And so we've worked with Microsoft to really gain the capabilities that we need to be a provider. I'm not sure if that answered your question or not. Yeah, she just clarified. She said okay. uh, we're, we're a Microsoft provider and would like to offer uh, this to our clients. Oh, got it. Um, Rita, we, I'd be happy to send you our email and, and then talk to you a little bit more about that as well. Continue to type your questions again. I want to remind you this uh, video and the uh, PowerPoint will be available within 48 hours. Free consultation link is bad. Um, so somebody put a consultation link in the chat room if we want to uh, fix oh, it. Yeah, it was just, uh, it, I think it got cut off at form and it was, it, we said four. So the next link that Matika put in should work. Okay, we're going to put a link to our survey in the chat room. Um, please make sure you fill out our survey. Uh, I see, great, it's working now, great. Thank you so much for letting us know, Scott. If you don't have any more questions, um, good, Tracy. I love Kevin, everybody's answering questions, awesome. We're getting all our questions answered. If you have any more questions, I'm gonna give you about a few more minutes to type your questions in the chat room. Again, we're gonna share our survey, we would love your feedback. I also, again, want to remind you, this will be available within 48 hours. We'll email everybody who's registered. So I know someone said that they could not get in. So because they registered, they will still get to hear the presentation. Um, An MSP okay. is a managed service provider. So organizations that can support others in helping them in their technology or managing their technology for them. Oh, good. Rita, did you see the um, comment from Joe? I love how you, you guys um, talk with each other because we're a community. He said they're MSP with qualified nonprofit clients using our services for support. So, um, Joe, maybe you want to put your information so you can chat with Rita as well. And once she contact Trudy and she'll just have lots of information she can use and share. Yeah, and I did see that um, somebody was asking if we'll get some of the chat information as well, and I think that's a great idea. So what we'll try to do before we send this is also make sure that we add to this, which are the additional resources and question and answer so that you guys can get that information because I know a lot was provided in chat here. Um, so we'll try to make that available to everybody. And the slides do also have most of the links that we've provided. I'm sure there were some others that we grabbed as well. I also want to remind you, um, as Shruti said, we have lots of free courses. Um, please go to TechSoup.org, go to the courses link, and a lot of the questions that you have are free on our courses link for Microsoft and TechSoup courses. So make sure you take advantage of that. 
Thank you so much. So would you put in the chat room one takeaway that you got from the event today? I see AmeriCorps said, thank you so much. This was very helpful. Jacqueline said, this, the courses are great. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yeah. Myself, thank you for letting us know. Mm -hmm. Great and free. I mean, who can beat that? I'm um, Joseph. <laughs> info. Awesome. So I'm going to, um, as you're typing in the chat room, I'm going to let uh, Shruti have any closing remarks. Again, I want to thank our um, team in the back. Thank you so much. Eli, Matika, Kevin, Gary, Janet, and Phil. Uh, uh, Shruti, did you have any closing remarks? I just wanted to thank everybody for attending today. Um, and please feel free to reach out to us for any questions that you have outstanding that we didn't get to. And um, the survey will really help us to make sure that we're providing more content and to provide events like this if you guys found them useful. And if there are things that we can do to improve it, I know Maureen, I, I definitely took in that I was a bit of a fast speaker. Um, I'm from uh, the New York area, so I tend to go a little fast. Um, but also that we really um, want to make sure that we have closed captioning and things um, available. And as Aretha mentioned, that will happen through our YouTube link. Um, but any other feedback that you can provide us that you may not have already shared is really helpful to us to make sure that these events, that we can produce them and that they're as useful to you um, as you need them to be. So thanks again for your time. Thank you, everybody. Love the comments. Love the comments. How do you sign up for the courses? Go to techsuit.org. You'll see the links there and you'll see courses. Um, it's, it's actually on the drop link down link. I think it's under the community link and you'll see courses there. Lots of courses, not just on Microsoft, but on grant writing, um, you name it. Everything you need to help your organization be successful, it's there here at TechSoup. And as Shruti said, before you go to you know any um, store, think about what you need and go to TechSoup and make sure that you're getting the, you know, the best um, option for your nonprofit. One takeaway, Joe says, TechSoup offers so much more than free and discounted products. They can help organizations get started with tech services and migration and upgrade planning. Boom, mic drop. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> his takeaway he's glad that um i'm not the only one who found the difference between microsoft office and yeah at, yeah office 365 i know it was confusing to me too awesome i need to share this information with volunteer staff awesome again yes yeah, share this um replay with your volunteers um with your team other nonprofits. yes um christy she did mention the the difference between the um office and the Office 365. Yeah, Christy's question over here about the version of Office the trainings use. The trainings are using Office 365 for the most part, but a lot of the components underneath that, the Excel, the PowerPoint, and the um, Word and uh, OneDrive can be leveraged from the 2019 and 2016 versions. And we try to, as much as possible, make some annotations for different versions that might be have some different uh, changes or configurations. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Any more questions? Can you just get 365 Exchange without getting the Office products? There are some add-on availabilities. We might want to make sure that we know how you guys are leveraging that to make the right licensing suggestion. So I would definitely recommend a consultation, Jenny, but there are opportunities to just do add-ons of specific product suites and not have the full thing. Awesome. Again, the survey is pinned at the top. Make sure you click on the survey and fill it out, fill it out for us. We'd love your feedback. Thank you so much. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we're going to let you go early, finish your day. As we say in our meetings, we're going to let you have your day back. Again, thank you, Shruti. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Thank you for everybody in the background. And thank you for the nonprofits for everything you do in the community. We'll see you on our next webinar or our next event. Bye -bye. Thank you, guys.